Welcome to Akhand Vidyashram, the first institute of impeccable wisdom, the walking, talking encyclopedia, the cranial parasympathetic nervous system. My mission, the impeccable wisdom, knowing which everything is fully known. My greatest discovery, Divyank, the divine design of nature, with which the perfect objects are designed and created. Divyank is the reward of 60 years of integrated education. Impeccable wisdom is enlightening and integrated knowledge is empowering. Let's understand the integrated human nervous system. Nervous system consists of three components. One inputs, sensory inputs are afferent division, which bring the external information from the external world, from receptor to the central nervous system, and central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, which evaluates all the information which is coming from the sensory system. Integration and master control is done by the central nervous system. And what is to be executed is done through the peripheral nervous system of motor component. So you can see right on top the three upper layers. Sensory, peripheral to central nervous system. Central nervous, peripheral nerves to the motor component. This is a reflex arch which executes all the reflex actions which take care of all the vital functions of the body spontaneously, immediately, without any problem. This is the most important component of human nervous system. You can say this is the core circuit. Now, when come to the motor component, it has got two components, voluntary motor system and involuntary motor system. Voluntary motor nervous system inf carries information from central nervous system to skeletal muscles through descending tracts. Whereas sensory information is carried from the body through the ascending tracts to the central nervous system. Voluntary brings the descending pyramidal tract. Now you have another component of the motor component, involuntary autonomic nervous system, which carries the information from the central nervous system to the visceral organs and endocrine glands. These are involuntary, spontaneous, autonomic, have no, we cannot control these things, which automatically designed so that all the vital functions of the body like breathing, heart functions, digestion, clearance and other system which make us healthy completely are involuntary in nature and they are designed in such a way that they can go on without our conscious control over the mind. So, in a, so these two branches are important. Now, involuntary is further divided into sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Prime function of parasympathetic nervous system is to rest, digest and conserve energy. This is almost slow induction. Sympathetic is to mobilize energy in case of emergency. These systems are well defined in almost all of them. Then comes to the further improvisation is parasympathetic is further divided into cranial parasympathetic and sacral parasympathetic. You can say craniosacral outflow which has got four pairs of cranial parasympathetic nerves, oculomotor, facial, glossopharyngeal and vagus which play a very important role in taking care of most of the vital functions of the organs of the body. Then sacral parasympathetic system, which has got three sacral nerves, parasympathetic nerves, arise from S2, S3, S4, segments of sacral spinal cord. And these take care of the reproductive organs. Now, they, up to this information is also available in most of the books, journals and otherwise. But I am trying to bring impeccable wisdom to the core. So I am trying to explain something or add something which has been ignored by most of the people. 
Rather, I don't see this being included as part of the integrated human nervous system. Let's, let me explain. Heart has got four pacemakers. Uterus has also got pacemakers. And there is mitric nervous system which is associated with digestive system. These three components you can call the fifth level of nervous system beyond sympathetic and parasympathetic. But this is associated with sympathetic and parasympathetic again. But they can function independent of rest of the brain including autonomic nervous system. We are going to talk about it also as we proceed with the example how they are executed at fourth level. But at this juncture, let me say, Russell thing works as an action potential, but here you will have a local graded potential which functions only within an area of local governments, like a state government, not a central government. Hope that picture is clear. So let this be the integrated human nervous system. The sensory component the flow chart has been marked with blue color, whereas motor component is marked with red color. Now let's say how the autonomic nervous system is developed, and particularly with respect to autonomic ganglia. We all know fertilization is ovum and sperm together to form zygote. And zygote after formation takes rest for one and a half days. And after that, multiplication starts with a binary division. Like fertilized egg, zygote divides into two cell divisions, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. Then you come to a stage of blastocyst, which further divides to form trilaminal layers, which you can see on the right on top. You have one layer called ectoderm, another mesoderm, third endoderm. These three layers, which you can see right in the middle, with also primitive streak, they play a role in formation of the body otherwise. Actoderm leads to the formation of skin and nervous system, and the people in which actoderm is predominant, they form a body called ectomorph. Mesoderm is a second layer from which muscles and skeleton is developed and these people by and large are called mesomorph are their muscular in structure. Endomorph is formed from endoderm layer, the internal organs. In endomorph, internal organs will be more prominent than the nervous system or the muscles. I think we have already discussed that in the previous video of ectomorph, the perfect nervous system. Now from this stage, let's go how, what happens further. On 19th day, there is a section of neural tube, primitives, and then you can start forming a neural plate and then also surface ectoderm as well as green, which is called neural fold. Now they start folding, come closer to on top. You can see in the picture on 20th day, you find the neural plate has given form to the neural glue, groove and neural folds are coming closer. And 22nd day, you find they're much closer and the structure is very clear. But on the day 26, you can see on top, you have a surface ectoderm layer from which you find the skin is developed. And then you have a neural tube from which nervous system is developed. And the green component are the neural crest cells. And migrated neural crest cells lead to the formation of autonomic ganglia, whether it's a sympathetic system are parasympathetic and also the one which forms adrenal medulla are also migrated neural crescent which are surrounded by three layers of adrenal cortex. So I'm sure this embryology, our genesis, our autoganglion is very important to understand 
the functions and anatomy of autonomic nervous system as we proceed further. Now, let me bring one component which is very, very dear to me. And which is, this is primarily based on my spiritual science experience of Kundalini Yoga and Akhand Yoga. Right in this, let me tell you, you can see the central part, hypothalamus is the head center for autonomic nervous system. And then further you can find midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. Those three structures form brain stem in which are the nuclei of the four cranial parasympathetic nerves. Midbrain, oculomotor, pons, the facial, medulla oblongata, glossopharyngeal and vagus. We are going to see that also as we proceed. Right up to hypothalamus, the whole world knows this is how the autonomic nervous system works. And because of this particular structure, right up to hypothalamus, and I can say the anterior part of hypothalamus is parasympathetic in nature and posterior is sympathetic in nature. And why posterior is sympathetic? Because it's close to thalamus, I have already explained. And why anterior is parasympathetic? Because it's close to the motor cortex. These things I have explained. Now we are trying to build and explain things better as we proceed. So as a result, seeing uh, videos in same order would be much better to comprehend the impeccable wisdom much better. Up to that is fine. I have also made it quite clear that Normally, books talk of eight lobes of cerebral cortex. According to Divyang, there should be ten. And those two are insular cortex, left and right. And they form the autonomic center, which is associated with hypothalamus. So, this is higher central autonomic nervous system. And insular cortex is other. It's also through a th Hypothalamus and thalamus is also associated with hippocampus, amygdala, limbic system and other major parts of cerebral cortex and the neocortex. Right up to the fourth layer of neocortex, reflexes are under involuntary control. Spontaneous immediate responses. Ascending tracts go up to fourth layer in the sensory component and descending pyramidal tract starts on fourth layer and come down. I have been saying over and over the outer three layers of neocortex, the functions are not known to the neuroscientists. But I have been lucky enough to experience the beauty of that and realize when energy in the entire body is con in my increased manifold. We can bring autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary in nature, also under voluntary control of super consciousness. That means outer three layers of neocortex will be able to control that and help us to be in tune with universal consciousness, Akash Kosh otherwise. Now you can see, I have given the symbol of Agnya Chakra right where pons is. That means they contracted with the brainstem. And Vigyan Chakra I have shown as a representation of hypothalamus. You can see Pragyan Chakra, which is pineal gland, which is the highest organ in which autonomic nervous system is associated. Beyond that, you don't see autonomic nervous system, particularly the outer three layers. Then outer three layers are where are associated with Sahasrara Chakra, which has been given that much of importance, that's what I've shown it right on top. So from this angle, I'm sure you can understand how voluntary motor nervous system, involuntary motor nervous system, and central autonomic nervous system, how they function to make our physical health possible, emotional health possible. But when we want to bring for spiritual integration to understand more than what common man, other intelligent person can think, we need to understand central autonomic nervous system and then go beyond central ner autonomic nervous system 
to the higher levels of consciousness. I'm sure now this particular picture makes it clear why I'm able to produce 8 hertz frequency throughout the brain with eyes open, eyes closed, only primarily because I've been able to control voluntary as well as involuntary functions of the nervous system and take it to superconscious level and that is a proof of it. Now let's understand the cranial parasympathetic nervous system. As you can see right on top, parasympathetic nervous system has got preganglion fibers. And then you have a ganglion, and then you have postganglion fibers, and then you have the organ which is going to be innervated by cranial parasympathetic nerves. Neurotransmitter in ganglion as well as argon is acetylcholine. This is something which I would like to do. Now, as far as midbrain is concerned, from which oculomotor nerve arises, autonomic ganglion is called Westfall, Edinger Westfall nucleus, which is located in midbrain. And the pre-ganglion fibers arise from there, go to ciliary ganglion, and then supply eyes, iris, pupil, which leads to constriction. The prime function of this particular oculomotor nerve is to protect our eyes against any sudden high light, damaging light, ultraviolet rays. So prime function of perhaps is to save us. Eyes will, the people will constrict and damage to the eyes is minimized. Ah, there is no, so that is one good function for oculomotor. From pons, you have a facial, which is seventh cranial nerve. It's got two branches. One is preganglion fibers go to sphenopalatine ganglion. From there, postganglion fibers go to lacrimal gland, which produce tears. I should not have a dryness. Lubrication is important. Otherwise, eyes which are vital could get damaged. So this particular ganglion, the nerve helps to produce tears as and when required, so the eyes are well lubricated. Second branch is submandibular ganglion, which supplies submandibular salivary glands and sublingual salivary glands, as you can see on the right side, and also the mucous membrane of the nasal area and nasopharynx. This is also a protective function to make sure whether you have COVID, SARC, or other virus or bacteria, mucus is formed to engulf that and we can clear it up much faster. This is one of the protection, divine protection by facial nerve. Now come to the medulla oblongata. You have two nerves, glossopharyngeal, which is ninth cranial nerve, and vagus, which is 10th cranial. Let's see the glossopharyngeal nerve. Preganglion fibers arise from upper part of the medulla oblongata, go to otic ganglion, and those fibers supply parotid gland and produce watery saliva. Whereas submandibular and sublingual salivary glands produce mucus rich saliva. Here it is watery saliva. Same fibers also supply mucus membrane of the mouth, pharynx, and larynx. So, in case of viral infection or bacterial infection, fungal infection of mouth, pharynx and larynx, glossopharyngeal nerve protects us from those infections so that we don't suffer. Now come to the question of the last of the four pairs of cranial, parasympathetic cranial nerves is vagus. It's called vagus because it goes haywire quite a lot. It has many plexuses before it supplies the organ to be supplied. So center is in metal amulicator. First branch goes to cardiac plexus, which supplies lungs, and lungs it can produce vasoconstriction, bronchial constriction, and that can lead to asthma depression. Second branch goes to also to cardiac plexus. The further fibers go to the heart, SA node on the right side, and the heart otherwise. This tries to keep the heart rate under control. Celiac plexus or solar plexus those branches, the, this particular gland, goes to stomach to produce hydrochloric acid 
enzymes for digestion. Saliva is for primary digestion of carbohydrates. Digestion of protein starts in the stomach in the presence of hydrochloric acid in an acidic medium and enzymes like pepsin and other things are produced in the process. Hydrochloric also tries to protect us from all the bacterial infection which would have ingested along with food. Also helps in absorption of B12, intrinsic factor. Also there are fiber which go to liver to form the formation of glycogen from glucose and simulation and purification otherwise gets to take place. Then you have pan pancreas where these fibers produce insulin synthesis for energy conversion to bring down blood sugar level. Also the fibers go to pancreas to produce alkaline medium to neutralize the acidic medium of stomach for digestion of fats or lipids. And those enzymes also are produced in pancreas as well as small intestine where absorption Digestion takes place as well as absorption takes place. From this, I think you can completely understand how beautiful is the cranial parasympathetic system to take care of our shield protection and digestion and other things and take care of health beautifully. Now, let's understand oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. It has got Edinger Westphal nucleus, which I told you, which is which produces autonomic parasympathetic fibers to produce constriction of the pupil. But that is responsible as well. Pupillary reflex is concerned. I've already explained that. You can go further further, but this is just a reminder from that. This is pupillary reflex where Edinger Westphal nucleus comes to play a role and the pathway has been given on the left side. For accommodation, you have another nucleus called oculomotor nucleus, which is motor in voluntary motor in midbrain, which can help the movement of medial rectus muscle to bring together to produce accommodation reflex, also to improve the concentration process. So now, dual role of oculomotor nerve, the cranial, parasympathetic as well as motor is well explained here. Now let's go to the facial and glossopharyngeal. Anterior 61.803% of the tongue is innervated by facial sensory component. That brings the information to the nuclear tractus in the brainstem and then to thalamus to the parietal thing. But posterior 38.196% or one third is by glossopharyngeal and anterior half is for good taste but posterior tongue is for bitter taste. So anything which is bitter could be dangerous like cyanide poisoning. So, in case that it can immediately produce vomiting because reflex, segmental reflex of glossopharyngeal nerve is able to judge immediately this is bitter, could be poisonous. Let's vomit off whatever has been taken. So, beautiful from that point of view. So, facial and glossopharyngeal explain. Now, I'm coming to now the mind, mind nervous system and which is closely associated with sympathetic and which I told you local government. Here, you have mitric nervous plexus which is located between longitudinal smooth muscle layers of GIT, digestive system, and circular smooth muscles. Between them is this. So this takes care that functions of both smooth muscles of gastrointestinal tract our digestive system. So this is something which I wanted to say. This is the fifth level of nervous system which we should also make it part. But this is able to work independent also because if rest of the brain is not working so that these are the vital functions like heart, digestion as well as distress should be taken care of.
so i'm sure that you know you can understand with this example why fifth level of nervous system is very very important now come to the vagus nerve the tenth and it's connected with the conducting system of the heart and that is the 10 levels but this is primarily the right vagus nerve is associated with conducting system and conductive system of sinoatrial node as a node is located in the right atrium close to the entry where superior vena cava and inferior vena cava open so stimulus for this particular system is from venous blood pressure we are going to talk about it how in a cardiac arrest we can stimulate this by increasing the venous blood pressure of the body now from this point of view i think it's very clear to so, low down i have repeated again nerve ligation of the conducting system the control by sympathetic and parasympathetic is when is lost in that event if sa node comes to play a role the heart rate will be 100 if sa node is not getting connected and there is a block between sa node to av node then av node will start heart rate of 61.8 next bundle of his the heart rate will be 38.2 then branches could be 20 or 3 and then is called ventricular escape whatever happens but that heart rate will be so low that we will need a pacemaker to bring us back and all this is designed with deviant ratio deviant sequence by that it's amazing how beautiful is our system and just because we have not been taught the way it should have been taught and we are not able to make optimum use of our nervous system completely now coming to the last picture is nothing but the same representation but i will not go into detail because we have already this video is quite elaborate let's not go discuss and i think uh, let's see this particular video and understand and how we can bring motor also under involuntary involuntary under super voluntary control go beyond the mind to make our body physically completely healthy emotionally stable mentally powerful and spiritually integrated that is objective of this particular video how the nervous system can help us master everything and do wonderful job so thank you very much for kind listening